Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I wanted to talk about finding Pareto efficiency within production possibility frontiers, or they're sometimes called production possibility curves. So here on the screen here, I have a production possibility frontier. In this economy, we can make wool or iron, and I have indicated three points on the graph. There is one point C, which is to the left of the frontier. There's another point A, which lies on the frontier. And there's a third point B, which lies to the right of the frontier. Now, you'll be told something like points A and points like it, which lie on the curve, are efficient. Points B and other points like it, which lie to the right-hand side of the curve, are unobtainable. And points C and other points like it, which lie to the left of the PPF, of the frontier, they are inefficient. So I think the sense in which points like B are unobtainable is fairly intuitive. Economics is all about scarce resources, we can't do everything we want. The points to the right hand side of the PPF are those combinations of output that we just can't manage given our current technological state and amount of resources. But really, I'm interested in this video in thinking about in what sense points like A on the frontier are efficient and points like C that are to the left-hand side of the frontier are inefficient. Now, of course, there's so many ways in which we can be efficient or inefficient. We can be cost efficient. We could be environmentally efficient. It just happens to be the case that when we're talking about efficiency in the PPF, we're talking about Pareto efficiency. So I've got a definition here and I'll read it out. An allocation is Pareto efficient if we can't make anyone better off without making at least one other person worse off. In an introductory microeconomics course, you actually see Pareto efficiency quite a bit. You might see it in game theory. You can see it in uh, when we're thinking about equilibrium in markets and perfect competition. In the case of the PPF, the argument about Pareto efficiency goes something like the following. Let's just say that as an economy, we decide we would like to produce seven tons of wool. So, so that amount of wool. And let's just say that we started from an allocation that is to the left-hand side of the PPF. So inside the frontier, maybe a point like C. Now at C, we've got three tons of wool and three tons of iron. That's how much we're producing. And so we can increase to seven tons of wool because that's what we've decided to do and we get to point D. Okay, good. Now let's do the same story, except let's imagine we don't start from an inefficient point, but we start from a point that's on the frontier. So a point that you would have been told in class is efficient. Now at a point like A, we are producing five tons of wool and five tons of iron. But note what happens if we want to increase our, the amount of wool that we're producing. We would increase from five to seven to some point like E. But E, you'll note, is to the right-hand side of the frontier. That is, it's in that area which we said before was unobtainable, that we don't have enough resources or the right sort of technology to be able to produce. So actually, if we wanted to get to seven tons of wool from a point like A, we would have to decrease the amount of iron that we were producing. So we'd have to go from E to a point like D. That is, if we really wanted to make seven tons of wool and we were initially producing at point A, we would have to decrease the amount of iron that we were producing. So let's just go back to our definition of Pareto efficiency. We said that an allocation is Pareto efficient if we can't make anyone better off without making at least one other person worse off. And so in this way, in this particular example, we see A is efficient because we can't increase the amount of wool that we're producing without decreasing the amount of iron. Intuitively, if we can increase the production of some good in our economy without having to decrease the production of another good, without having to divert resources, there is a sense in which we are being really inefficient in our allocation of resources, that there's some resources there that aren't being used in that initial allocation. We can tie this into the sense in which C is inefficient as well. 
And so C in is, efficient, is inefficient because we can increase the production of, I showed you wool, but we can do it with iron as well, without decreasing um, the production of, I, I showed in my example how we didn't have to decrease iron, but if we did it the other way, it would be the opposite. And so this is true for all of the points to the left-hand side of the PPF. They are inefficient in this way because there's some sense in which we can increase the production of either of our goods without having to decrease the production of the other. In contrast to this, points of allocation that lie along the PPF frontier, such as A and D that I've got here, are going to be efficient because we cannot increase the production of either the horizontal axis good or the vertical axis good without somehow finding our way into the territory of the unobtainable unless we decrease the production of the other good. Okay, so that's the, indeed the sense in which we talk about efficiency when we're talking about PPFs and the different points. There's obviously so many other things to say about PPFs. They're so exciting, uh, but I'll go through those in other videos. So if this helped, and I hope it did, please like and subscribe. Have a look at my channel and have a look at the other videos that I've got going here. I hope you guys are really enjoying studying economics and that you're having a really good night.